Good Monday, Monday morning, everyone. I posted a few things uh, on my Facebook page. They're just uh, sort of speculations. They're, these are not uh, uh, to illustrate any sort of uh, formal doctrine of, uh, of uh, interpretation of, of what uh, all of this means here in the star ruby and everything but it is food for thought and uh, they're like handouts that i would pass out at monday night class uh, to get people uh, talking and thinking about these things so uh, but there are a couple things concerning the holy hexagram which uh, is the star in the star sapphire ritual and uh, what we spent the last couple of days talking about already. So please, uh, after you see this this morning, uh, review what I posted uh, a little further down on my page for today. But anyway, this is the ritual itself, as promised in a book about the rituals of Thelema. Liber uh, 36, The Star Sapphire which is an AA publication in Class D. And because it's an AA publication, uh, you keep your personal comments speculative and, and uh, more or less to yourself. Crowley didn't want people to establish a doctrine or a dogma around things that are supposed to be led by the... the in formation by the inspiration of one's own uh, spiritual mentors and the ultimate spiritual mentor of course is our own holy guardian angel but here's the star sapphire and then my brief unorthodox or un, un dogmatic uh, comments uh, on it afterwards the ritual is really short. It's just like one page. And remember, I, I advise people to learn it and to do it uh, just as a, uh, a regular ritual that you would do standing up in your living room temple uh, to do it, drawing the hexagrams. Let the adept be armed with his magic rood and provided with his mystic rose. In the center, let him give the signs, the LVX signs, or if he know them, if he will and dare do them and can keep silent about them, the signs of NOX, being the signs of Puer, Vir, Puella, and Mulir. Omit the sign IR. And I believe in his own footnote to that, it's Isis rejoicing, one of the NOX signs. You omit it. Let him advance to the east and make the holy hexagram, saying, Pater et Mater Unus Deus Ararita. Let him go round to the south. Make the holy hexagram and say, Mater et Filius Unus Deus Ararita. Let him go round to the west, make the holy hexagram, and say, Filius et Filiu, excuse me, Filius et Filia, Unus Deus Ararita. Let him go round to the north, make the holy hexagram, and say, Filia et Pater, Unus Deus Ararita. Let him return to the center, and so to the center of all. 
making the rosy cross as he may know how, saying, Ararita, Ararita, Ararita. In this the signs shall be those of Set, triumphant, or of Baphomet. Also, Set shall Set, excuse me, also shall Set appear in the circle. Let him drink of the sacrament and let him communicate the same. Then let him say, Omnia in Dios, Duo in Unum, Unis in Nil, Hac nec quatro, nec omnia, nec duo, nec unis, nec si, uh, nihil sunt. Gloria Patri, et Matri, et Filio, et Filia, et Spiritu Sancto, externo, et Spiritu Sancto, interno, ut erit, est irit, et secula seculorum, sex und uno per nomen septum in uno ararita. Let him repeat the signs of LVX, but not the signs of NOX, for it is not he that shall arise in the sign of Isis rejoicing. That's it. Please excuse my Latin pronunciation. You may assume that all other Latin pronunciations are incorrect. <laughs> are incorrect. Okay, I mean, it's very simple and at first glance, very uh, curious. And in order for you to, to stand in your living room and start practicing this, uh, you'll have to make uh, certain assumptions as to what your mystic rod is in your or, or your uh, magic root and mystic r rose and and uh, uh, making the rosy cross, as you know how, etc., etc., and and uh, what hexagrams to draw in the the various quarters. But you can do that, and in order to practice it, do whatever until things start to dawn on you what what's going on, and then can let the ritual evolve in your practice. But here's the comments. So here's the comment, uh, one uh, section at a time. Let the adept be armed with his magic rood, that's R-O-O-D, and provided with his mystic rose. Author's comments, the magic rood is the wand. The wand of the magician. Now, ultimately, the wand is just a symbol, too, and the wand would be on the Tree of Life, and the wand would be Hokma itself, number two on the Tree of Life. The will of the magician. The magic rood is the wand of the magician, or the lance of the priest, symbolic of the lingam. His mystic rose is the cup of the priestess symbolic of the yoni and also on the tree of life that would be bina number three on the on the tree of life okay two in the center living let him give the signs of lvx or if he knows them if he know them if he will and dare do them and keep silent about it those are the four powers of the sphinx uh, the signs of NOX being the signs of Puer, Vir, Puella, Mulier, but omit the sign of Isis rejoicing. So here's Duquette's comment. The LVX signs are to be used in the standard version of the star sapphire. But the ritual can also be executed employing the NOX signs if the magician is at 
the point of his or her initiatory career where it is appropriate and necessary. Since this is less often the case, we are warned by the powers of the Sphinx, if he know them, if he will and dare do them, and can keep silent about them. The sign of Isis rejoicing is omitted, as it has no correspondent among the signs of LVX. And then I refer to the figures of Constance making the, the signs earlier in the book. Number three. Let him advance to the east and make the holy hexagram, saying, Pater et Mater et Unos Deus Ararita. Now, as we found out earlier in this circle, the uh, quarters of the hexagram ritual are set by the fixed, excuse me, the cardinal signs of the zodiac. So in the hexagram ritual, in the east, the cardinal sign is Aries or fire. So the holy hexagram of fire. Now, it would be, it would be fire in a normal thing. Crowley doesn't tell us in the ritual itself that this is what's going to happen but he sets us all up uh, in a hexagram temple. So the holy hexagram of fire, which is the transcendent, transcendence of opposites, which occur at the union of Yod and He. So we've got, it's part of the little things I put up yesterday. Yod, He, Vav, He, father, mother, son, daughter. So the holy hexagram of fire in the east would be the hexagram that represents the transcendence of opposites, which occur at the union of Yod and He. So when Yod and He get together, they create the hexagram of fire in the east. And you say, Pater et Mater Unus Deus Ararita, father and mother, one God, Ararita. So see what we're doing? Let him go round to the south. We're going uh, Diosil here. Let him go round to the south, make the holy hexagram, and say, uh, uh, Mater et Filius, Unos Dios Ararita. So let him go round to the south. Uh, the holy hexagram in the south would be that of Earth. That's uh, like the classic Star of David in the old uh, kind of uh, hexagram. The he holy hexagram of Earth, the transcendence of opposites which occur at the union of He and Vav. So in the east, it's the union of Yod and He. In the south, it's the union of He and Vav mother and son. Mater et filius, mother and son. One God, Ararita. Number five, go round to the west and make the holy hexagram and say filius et filia, unus Deus Ararita. So the, in the west, the holy hexagram is of air. And that's the transcendence of opposites, which occurs at the union of the Vav and the final He. Now, there's nothing left. We've hit rock bottom of yod He vav He. But, like the symbol of the snake with its tail in its mouth, this is an ongoing circuitry. It's an ongoing cycle. If the hay, final hay, is the tail of the snake, then she joins with the head of the snake to start the whole process over again. So in the north, do the holy hexagram of water. So that'd be water because it's, it's uh, cancer. That's how the zodiac 
cardinal signs of the zodiac go around. The holy hexagram of water is the transcendence of opposites which occurs at the union of the final hay and yod. So it's father and daughter, or daughter and father. Daughter and father, unus dius erarita. Daughter and father, one god erarita. Now, on, this sounds incredibly uh, uh, incestuous and, and shocking, but on a cosmic scale, I assure you, uh, it is uh, 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 not even a misdemeanor. <laughs> In the cosmic scale of incestuous uh, uh, power dynamics, okay? So don't worry that Crowley was suggesting that anybody... Uh, act these out in a uh, a rural family environment, okay? That's not what Crowley was talking about. Philia et pater, unus dies errarita, daughter and father, one god, errarita. Seven, let him return to the center, and so to the center of all, making the rosy cross as he may know how, saying, Arrarita, Arrarita, Arrarita. The rosy cross is the union of the magic rood and the mystic rose. It can be appropriately symbolized in this ritual as the universal hexagram with a small five petal rose in the center. Another symbol that you could draw as you're learning this the ritual would would be the the classic uh, crux on sata the the ankh that's that's a rose cross too uh, section eight in this sign shall be those of set triumphant and or of baphomet and also sh set shall appear in the circle let him drink of the sacrament let him communicate the same. The sign of set triumphant could be interpreted as the sign of matter triumphants. All these signs are in this book. The product of the union is then treated as a Eucharist. Part nine, then let him say, oh, here, here comes Lon's Latin again. Omnia in, in uh, duos, duo in unum, unus in nihil, hec nec, hec nec, quattro, nec omnia, nec duo, nec unus, nec nihil sunt. Omnia in dios, all in two. Duo in unum, two in one. Uh, unus in nihil, one in nothingness. Hec nec quattro, nec omnia, nec duo, nec unus, nec nihil sunt. These are neither four, nor all, nor two, nor one, nor nothing. So what you're saying, if you want to do it all in English, all in two, two in one, one in nothingness. These are neither four, nor all, nor two, nor one, nor nothing. Then the benediction at the end, Gloria Patri et Matri et Filio et, filio et Filia uh, et Spiritu Sancto Externo et Spiritu uh, Sancto Interno, interno uh, uh, ut erit est erit in secula seculorum sex, un, uh, ec, sex on uno uh, per nomen septum in uno ararita. Glory be to the Father, and to the Mother, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, without and within, which was, and is, and shall be world without end, six in one through the names of the seven in one, Ararita. Now, I would suggest as you practice this, do it all in English, or do it all in your, your the vernacular uh, you're used to. It's only fun and more powerful and more dramatic and truly more magical, though, once you know exactly what it is you're saying, to do it 
in a foreign magical language. You get, you get a bigger magical charge eventually when you do it in Latin. But it, your Latin is really anemic, okay, unless you've actually uh, uh, got it burned in your brain in your own language first so you know exactly what you're saying. Finally, let him then repeat the signs of LVX, but not the signs of NOX, for it is not he that shall arise in the sign of Isis rejoicing. So, Duquette's comments are brief. The NOX signs are inappropriate at this point, for the epiphany has occurred as the result of the creation of the rose, rosy cross. Okay, at the risk of, of committing a play on words or a pun, I hope that's food for thought. And I hope as you uh, uh, review this thing and review uh, the, the ritual in the book, uh, that you keep in mind some of the, the diagrams that I've, uh, I've posted. But ultimately, you have to figure this out as it is with absolutely everything in magic. And you are well advised not to postpone anything until you are totally confident that you've got it all figured out. Because you know, you probably don't. And that's sort of the, the, the beauty of the dynamics of studying magic. Your grasp of it grows, but it only grows at the same speed as you grow. So tomorrow we pick up something new. The chapter, chapter eight on the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel. And I just last Wednesday, uh, we did our live Zoom uh, presentation of the Holy Guardian Angel. Uh, I went very well. Thank you all for uh, uh, attending that. Uh, it is now available. Uh, uh, the recording of it is uh, now uh, available. And if you're uh, interested uh, in that, just e uh, e uh, email me and I'll, I'll figure out how to send that to you. It's $25. That's uh, uh, if you want to purchase it for your own uh, review over and over again. Anyway, but the Holy Guardian Angel is free. <laughs> okay. My, my talk was produced, so... And my books, you, they're for sale too, you know, but all of this is free in its own way. The books aren't, uh, well, you know what I mean. Continue to have a good week, everyone. Love is the law, love under will.